Good afternoon, folks. We have a special show today. My name is Bob Venturini. I am host of An Hour with Bob, and we're actually we're talking about it. I am approaching my 32nd year. May 29th is my anniversary on this show. May 29th will be in starting my 32nd year on An Hour with Bob and Bob's Big Adventure, which we haven't done too many of them with the bad knees or whatever, but we've had some great shows. In fact, we're going to show. I talked to my producer, who is no longer in Rhode Island. He moved to Virginia, which actually killed me. But I brought down a whole bunch of shows, uh, footage that ne has never been seen from different places I went. And this morning, when he was showing me clips, he sh showed me a clip in Kazakhstan, showed me another clip from Morocco. And I know I've showed shows in both of those places, but these are. This is, this is video that hasn't been seen, and I, I was shocked when I saw it. Some that I didn't, didn't even remember until he let it run a little further. And even a show I did with a guy who won the first America's Got Talent. His name was Terry Fader. He was a ventriloquist. And after he won, he still had a contract to do a show in Newport. And a good friend of mine was uh, producing those shows. So I was allowed, uh, first of all, I was allowed to meet him and talk to him, and then I asked him if it would be possible if I got some, a little bit of video footage during the show. And if you don't know, when any, even networks, uh, press wants to do cover a sporting event or any kind of event, they're only allowed like to roll for three minutes or five minutes or six minutes or a, a singer, they're allowed to only cover one, you know, to, to film one song. They're not allowed to cover the whole thing. Well, when I asked Terry Fader, could I uh, you know, get a little video of your event, he says, you can take the whole thing. So I'm shocked, totally shocked. I go into the event, I'm sitting about 10 rows back, and I'm leaning out the aisle, and he starts the show, and he says, folks, uh, don't be, don't worry. He says, uh, that man has my Bob, he says, he, just like this, he says, Bob has my permission to, taped the entire show, which was a shock to everybody. And he said, you know something? In fact, the rest of you can do a little bit of video yourself on your phones. And you know, everybody applauded and whatever. This guy made, even though he was already, he already got the contract with, uh, with um, Las Vegas, his deal was he signed two five-year contracts. One was one year, $100 million. Wow. He went from a, a just working in Texas, he's from Texas. He went from working in Texas, you know, doing little gigs here and there, to winning the first America's Got Talent, won a million dollars, to getting a contract for $110 million a year. No, 100 million was the first five. Second five, which he signed together, was $110 million a year. Isn't that crazy? Only in America. No. And, and he has since. He has since. Outrageously so, funny. He, uh, oh, God. Oh, he has my, since. And, and I got footage I never even realized, I never, sh I never saw before. And it shows me going up to who, who, who the hell is Terry Fader? Who's Terry Fader? Well, he's right there, like <laughs> we had planned this. Who, who was this guy, Terry Fader? Everybody's talking about. And I'm asking people in the crowd, I already you know, told to say, you know, oh, I don't know. I, I'm going over one person, another person. Who's Terry? You know Terry Fader? You know Terry? No, no, I never heard of him. He's sitting right there, you know. It was all a big joke, of course. 
But I mean, it, they did well, too, the, the people that I asked. And, and it was funny. So I said, I said to John, I said, yeah, let's make a tape out of that and send that. And then I got his, his show. So we're going to show a whole half hour, which nobody is going to ever be allowed to do that. In fact, I'm sure when I try to put that on YouTube, they're going to tell me, no way, you know, because you've got to have, but I don't have a written contract with him, a written rights. Yeah, right. But I do have the rights to show his video because he, by his, by his own voice, his own words, the guy is immen immensely talented. W what got me? Larry, the best part, what got me was when he did the turtle and he did the Roy Orbison song, Crying. I could not Crying believe it. I could not. And he sounded just like him. And Roy Orbison is my favorite singer of all time. The and, and the voice, he hit the high notes, the whole thing, or the turtle did. But he hit the, all these notes without moving his mouth. I, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, there are ventriloquists talking, yep. and then there are ventriloquists singing right. like he does. It's unbelievable. And not only him, not only Roy Orbison, you figure, okay, he can do that, that guy. But At Last, who, who did that song? Who did that song, At Last? Uh, Etta James. Etta James. He did, that's how he won it. He won it on that, that song. He did the Etta James song and sounded just like Etta James. It's so he goes from the Roy Orbison with the big, big high notes Wait. to Etta James. Holy Phenomenal. Talent. Holy mackerel. So yeah. they were after him in, in, in you, Vegas. You have affected a lot of lives, positively. And I go to Vegas, to my, son, my nephew got married in Vegas, I go to Vegas, I said, beautiful. I'll go, I'll, and he said, you ever come to Vegas, front row, right? So I go to Vegas, I, so I, I go into the, um, I forget where it was, Bally's. Was it Bally? No, it wasn't Bally's. I think he said the Mirage. Mirage, yeah, yeah, I think so. I go in there to you know, get tickets. I said, uh, what time's Terry Guadi? He oh, he's on vacation. Oh. He was in Florida. No. <laughs> he was in Florida for the whole week, I missed him. Huh. So I'll have to go back there again. Yeah, you'll Any have to go back. Anyway, gentlemen, today, special, special show. I have three gentlemen from the Rhode Island Heritage Hall of Fame joining me today. Give me your names. Tell us who you are. I'm Larry Reed, the Vice President of the Heritage Hall of Fame. I'm Jimmy D'Agostino, a Board of Directors, and I'm the Events Chairman of the Heritage Hall of Fame. And also, you hold a rank in the... A Brigadier General, retired. United States Air Force. Impressive. Thank you. And Al? I am the president of the Rhode Island Heritage Hall of Fame. My name is Al Bopalat. I reign from the great city of Woonsocket. Well, when, when Bopalat's a dead giveaway. It's a dead giveaway. <laughs> it's a dead giveaway. I'm part French, by the way. So, yeah. yeah. And I lived in Woonsocket for a couple of years. Bopalat, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a pretty well-known name up in that part of the woods. Oh, I'll bet it is. It I'll is. bet it is. But they also have a lot of Italians up there because that's... Diamond that, Hill Road. I have, actually inducted uh, former Mayor Charles Seabold Deli. Oh, there you go. Into the Hall of Fame about, uh, I would say, eight years ago. I had the pleasure of inducting him. It was for what he did after he left being right. mayor. He uh, helped and uh, with all the uh, elderly, started all these sporting programs, and he stayed on for the next... 30 years after just being involved, you know, that's what gets people, they go above and beyond just being a politician. Right. You know, you have to give back to your different communities, you have to uplift lives. Those are the important things. When we look at the bios, right. when people that are going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, yep. each director has their own thing. Me, I love philanthropy, I love people where they uplift lives of the yep. normal people of the inner city and why not? So, you know, we all have our own little specialties. But right. uh, the cream always rises to the top. <laughs> that it does. <laughs> that it does. All right, first off, the Rhode Island Heritage Hall of Fame. When did it start? Okay. Well, why don't I just read a couple of paragraphs? Go yet? for it. So it'll give us a little background to Absolutely. open and talk. Okay, just a little press release. Uh, according to board president in Woonsocket City, Civic leader Albert R. Bopalant, the Hall of Fame consisting of illustrious Rhode Islanders from Rod Williams and the chief sachem of the Narragansett and Wampanoag tribes to the present was created in 1965 to honor any individual who has brought credit to Rhode Island, brought Rhode Island into prominence, and contributed to the history and heritage of our beloved state. Such individuals, said Beaupont, must have been born in Rhode Island, yep. lived in Rhode Island, studied or worked in Rhode Island 
for a specific time or made his or her reputation here. The Rhode Island Heritage Hall of Fame exists to honor and recognize and to extol and publicize the achievements of those Rhode Island men and women who have in the words of the Hall of Fame induction citation made, made significant contributions to their community, state, and or nation. It is also our mission to tell the story of Rhode Island history using the biographies of our inductees, noting their collective impact upon every phase of Rhode Island's development. That includes TV. <laughs> that's, why, that's why you're being inducted, Bob. An important purpose to the Hall of Fame, other than to honor our inductees and their achievements, is to teach Rhode Island history to our students and the general public. The Hall of Fame was founded in 1965 through an initiative of its first president, Providence Journal reporter and artist Frank Lanning. Since that time, the Hall of Fame has held annual induction banquets to honor its newest members. I think that's kind of lays the groundwork. Right, for us right. To have some kind of discussion. Good speaker, by the way. You got a strong voice, man. Well, ever since I became president, I guess. He <laughs> <laughs> had a strong requirement of the job. <laughs> he gained a strong voice when he was in the army. Army. Yes. And boy, can he belt out an order. Really? Oh. I'll bet. I'll Absolutely. bet. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. And, and um, you know, it, it, it's, it's funny because on our board, the 20 board of directors, really, truly, it is the most esteemed board in the state of Rhode Island. Hell yeah. And, yeah, oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, we have the greatest orators. We have um, uh, Steve Avison. Okay. Good. Oh, great guy. Love him. He's looked <laughs> okay. Channel 12 for years. He yeah. was an anchor. He's been on this show yeah. three or four times. We have Mike Lyons. Mike Lyons been on this show. We have Dr. Scott Malloy. Scott Malloy, too. We have Larry Reed. We have oh. the general, a great orator. <laughs> One time he memorized a 500 word bio. I said, General, where's your notes? Oh, I just did it by really? Plus, it took me about 14 months. To yeah, do it yeah. Because yeah. I'm, I'm not young anymore. Yeah. But it was nice. And then, of course, it's led by the number one, the big guy, the guy who teaches, who's taught more people in the state oh of Oh, my Rome, God. Dr. Yep. Patrick, Patrick Conley. T. A Conley. Legend. A legend. A legend is right. You know, and, and, right. And, and I know the, the first part and the second part of the question, if you just want to stay with the first part, I got something briefly to read on the second part about Dr. Conley's legacy. Okay, so, go for it. Whatever, okay. <clears throat> From the founding fathers of Rhode Island. Now, by the way, this is part of my introductory speech, my inaugural speech as president. So you're getting a special preview <laughs> today. Uh -huh. Oh, thank the you. The doctor hasn't looked at it. The doctor has no clue what I'm going to say. I'm going to read two paragraphs, and that's it. Really? Okay, because i got five and a half minutes to say That's it. right. Okay. Oh, he's going to be yanked off the stage. Exactly. From the founding fathers of Rhode Island to this graduating class of 2023 inductions, 8 million inhabitants have called Rhode Island home. Only 800 have earned the privilege to be inducted into this Rhode Island Heritage Hall of Fame. My 25-year involvement, 20 years as a director, led under the tutelage of the great Dr. Patrick T. Conley, saw him initiate and activate initiatives like our outreach program that Larry will be discussing right. shortly. Yep. Two dozen historical convocations, our ad booklet program, and recently deceased inductions to bring us current. Dr. Conley also has provided videos of the inductees, a, a, a new thing that we have on stage now that you'll be very proud when you see it, a new website, acquisition of first class office space, and a 20 member board of directors second to none in this state. That's just a few things. Dr. Conley has not only become our state's historian laureate, but has become, and is our Constitution scholar, he is the written 
but not only the written, the spoken word of our state, of our beloved state. Through his teachings, he has uplifted the lives of so many Rhode Islanders. Oh, yeah. With, his, with all his books, those books oh he's done, God. histories of Rhode Island. He is. Second, as you said, he's second a national tonight. treasure here in the state of he Rhode absolutely, Island. Absolutely, absolutely is. Yep. Great, great man. Great man. I uh, have the pleasure of uh, just, and uh, um, the honor to be able to say I call him a friend. He's a, he's a great guy. A, six months ago, we were there. Dr. Conley and I, we went out to dinner to discuss the presidency. And, um, and by the way, we should acknowledge that you just were installed as a new just president. Just installed, just sworn in last week. I was there. Right. You were there. I was there. <laughs> you were taking pictures. Right. You sat right on the side of my wife, <laughs> front row. <laughs> so, no. with, with, with Gene Valicenti. With Gene Valicenti, the rest of the game. And this is a great graduating class, by the way. We're going to have a lot of fun. And, you know, when uh, people get on stage and being there for some 20 years, and Larry and, and the Joe, you both have 10 years on the Hall of Fame now? About, yeah. Yeah, so yep. this season, you know, I got 25. And um, 20 years as a director, I would assist setting it, it up as a friend to Dr. Conley years ago. And I will tell you, we have we see some inductions that can bring tears to your eyes. Right. When you get up there, Bob, okay, and you look at the 300, 400, 500 people gathered, and you realize that you stand up there, right? And you realize it hits you who your class of 2023 is. Right. Well, that's why my problem is, I've been speaking all my life. My problem is going up there and holding it together. I've never been Difficult. honest like that. Believe it or not, right? I have had, as vice president, and Larry has also, uh, brought people up to the stage and um, from congressmen, senators, what have you, right? It's such an honor that, uh, it, they're, they're nervous. And we have seen people publicly on stage, real estate developers, right? right? Well renowned in this state. Lose it. Say, I'm sorry to their wife. I wish I could have spent more time at home and apologized to their children. Dr. Singh, several years ago, 500 people there, right? It says, his hands, his heart, the, the book that he wrote. Uh, he has more heart surgery than anybody in this United States. He apologized to his children. There wasn't one dry tear out of 500 dry. people wow. over there. So you're there, and I would be on the side of the stage with Mike Lyons, okay? Right. My good and, friend, by the way. Yes, Mike and you Lyons would see people talking, and, and you would see them just trying to find the next word, mm. and just a sense of humility comes over you at that moment, at that time, because you're realizing, judged by your 20 peers of this state, from Wesley to Winsocket, the board of directors is the most difficult board to get on. We'll talk about that later. But you were judged by your peers, and to, to have that honor, okay, bestowed upon you, you realize that you've come in this world, in this life, that you did something above and beyond the call of duty. Right. Any words? Sure. No, I think you summed it up uh, very nicely. It, it, it's for most of the inductees, it's an exceedingly emotional event because it suddenly hits them. Right. Bob, as, as, as was already mentioned, when you're at that podium and you're looking at the three, four, five hundred folks, out there who were there for one purpose and one purpose only, to honor and pay homage to your success and your, to your fellow inductors, of course. <clears throat> it, it is, it has to be a very emotional experience. And oftentimes what has happened is some of the inductees, male and female, they just make a very brief statement and to something like, ladies and gentlemen, I am, I am so emotionally overwhelmed right. by what has just happened that all I can say is thank you, everybody, 
Okay, and we've seen that happen. Right, and, and right. you know, they got tears in their eyes. Their mind goes blank. It, uh, absolutely, yeah, because it, it, this is big. Think I, about, think about what you're, in, what you're joining. You have the millions of people that have ever lived in the state of Rhode Island. Okay, only 800. Right, right. Have been and going all the way back to Roger Williams. Okay, and so forth and so on. So this is the most unique and distinct honor. So I've changed my opening speech, my speech, about seven times already. I got pages. <laughs> and you want to change it more, Bob? I'm go I am going to change it more because I, I know, well, I don't know, but I, I got an idea because I gave Joe Rocco a bunch of information because my my legacy is is the Toys for Tots. It's 31 years doing this show, 24 as the um, host and the producer of the Toys for Tots telethon at the Warwick Mall. But before that, I was doing Toys for Tots for 20 something years. I look back at the same. I was, first time I did Toys for Tots, I was a teenager. And if I get into that, I would totally lose it. If I talked about why I started doing Toys for Tots, I'm losing it now. Um, when I was 23, I was asked to be Santa Claus for then the city of Pawtucket, when they had a city, when they, before the uh, malls ruined sure. all the downtowns, we had a city. We had Perlows, we had Apex, you had mm -hmm. uh, um, Roberts, uh, Children's Store, they had Salzman's, they had all kinds of stores down there. And my sister at the time, who's now the head of the Royal Hospitality Association, Dale Venturini, uh, she asked me, because I used to bartend for all their president's events, all their uh, big shot events, because I would put them in line, I'd bust them up, I'd, you know, <laughs> I'd, and other people wouldn't do that. You know, they'd cow, you know, cow down to them, and I'd go, what do you want? You want, I know you want another drink, you want me to hit that a little more, you know, that type of thing. And they liked it. And when I did, when I did it once, and uh, she got the regular guy back, and then she, she asked me after, she goes, they're all asking for you. So I ended up doing it on a regular basis. But then she asked me to be Santa Claus. Well, I was working at Etner at the time in the, the new hospital trust tower, which is called by a different name. Now it's the flat building next to the Superman building. I originally worked at the Superman building, uh, room 920, when that hospital trust building was built. Mm -hmm. We moved our agency over there, and I had eight, 812, my room was. And um, they had a heliport on the roof. And Dale asked me to be Santa Claus, and they decided to make this real big deal out of Pawtucket's Santa Claus. I don't know why, I'm 23 years old, I don't have an ounce of fat on me, <laughs> right? But three pillows later, and a beautiful suit, and a great uh, beard, a, a great wig, and the whole thing, and I had it with me. I go up on the roof to it on a waiting helicopter. They flew me to Pawtucket, circled over this huge crowd in downtown, Roosevelt Avenue and Main Street, and they had a throne set up for Santa Claus. And they circled a couple times, a crowd, there had to be a couple thousand, at least a couple thousand people there. So they couldn't land right there because all the people. Sure. So they landed a block away at the other side of Roosevelt Avenue where the fire station is. And I get off that and get on a fire truck. And I <laughs> rode around freezing my butt off on, on the top of the fire truck on the ladder, a big hook and ladder, right? I'm up on the fire truck, he rides around and drops me off right in front of the throne. I get off the truck, they escort me over, they had to spread the people over to the throne. I start doing the, you know, with the kids, you know, Santa Claus thing. And it ended like 10.30 at night. So I get, get a ride back to my office, change. I go outside, by, the, by then, then, back then, the, uh, uh, Capricio's was the Gladiator, it was a nightclub. So I go down to the Gladiator, it's about, just about news, news time, and they had a big screen TV, and it comes on, and I go, oh yeah, they, they said, because they, they had mentioned, you know, how they say the tease has come in Santa Claus, interview with Santa Claus. So I said, yeah, they're gonna interview me, and they're like, people I'm there with, you know, that I ran into there. Right. Yeah, right, I go, so we show Santa Claus, and you know, they're going up to him and asking him questions, I said, that's me, yeah, right. And I said, no, that's me. So now I started telling them the answer to, the, I told them the questions that they're gonna ask me and I told them what my answers were gonna be. So they started realizing that I wasn't bull, I was, I, was, I was real, but I also have a cracked fingernail, I've always had it all my life. And I, at one point, I did it on purpose because I, I, I had a 
chance that it was going to be shown on TV, I took my glove off and I just held my hand there. And I didn't do it for any reason other than any reason that anybody knew, right. but I wanted to, you know, spread, single me out, right? So I said, in fact, he's going to take his glove off, his left hand off, left hand glove off, and you've got to see a cracked finger now. And that's when everybody, now they believe me. They couldn't, wow. how the heck did you get back here so fast? <laughs> wow. And, and, and about that's something. That. Yeah, it, 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 it's those kind of stories that Joe Rocco captures your life in about two and a half minutes oh, on video. He does such a wonderful job. And you're up there before you're inducted. And I say, please turn the video on, right? And you sit and you watch that, right? I'm probably not going to watch it because I will definitely and, lose it. No, it. And you realize, right, while you're there at that time, at that point, you realize a life well led, okay, well lived. And then after the video, uh, you are inducted and then you have to give your speech. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so. Limited yeah. to three minutes. Can I give my sure. speech first before I see the video? <laughs> <laughs> that's up to the general to change. He is the boss <laughs> of the stage. Now, we, we got this all yeah. essentially completed. We revamped the whole process from last year. Oh, really? Uh, I was there and, last year. Yeah, yeah. I was and, there. Uh, but, well, if you were there, you remember, it wasn't a pretty... Uh, well, there was one individual there. In particular. Went, we had to help. mention names. No, 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 we can't, no. no we can't mention names. No, but uh, time-wise, it was uh, so well, It was almost like an hour with him. It wasn't, a, it wasn't Thank three you. minutes. Thank you. So that's why the new president said he needs to put somebody that, in charge that is familiar with giving orders. Yeah, like a general. Sure. Yeah. Like a general. And, of course, he picks on me. Wow. And uh, I brought in my longtime dear friend, uh, uh, retired Colonel Dennis Morgan, okay, and uh, I said, you're going to be my vice uh, chairman of the events committee. And uh, I says, we're going we're gonna to totally revamp this thing. I said, because it's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, the thing was still going on at 10.30, right. okay, right. at night. Now, when people attend these particular functions. And it starts at 5. Well, cocktail hour Co 5, cocktail. okay, 5 to approximately 5.30, uh, yep. quarter to six. But when people attend these particular functions, you have to understand the majority of the attendees right. are not young children. Right, right. They're not teenagers, they're not in their 20s or 30s. They're people probably between 60 and 80 at yep. least, with some older than that. Yep. Because that's the general age category of our inductees. So the, the, these are the, the uh, siblings of the inductees, uh, the spouses, yep. obviously friends. F dear friends who are generally around the same age. Right. Okay. Now, I pretty sh I'm pretty sure that we're all in agreement on this. When we go out to a function, we want to have a good time, first and foremost. Okay. We want to have a good meal. And we want the function, if they say begins at 6 and ends at 9, we want to be out of there no later than nine. The older I get, the less time I want to spend outside. Okay? Am I? Am I? Do you agree with that? I mean, okay. Yeah, so, that's true. so I'm we, up a little later than nine. Well, but. no, I mean, yeah, but you're home. You know, you're not listening to now. We usually, once an event starts to get out of control, all all it is is just nonsense right. and gibberish. And, and then people and, start and, heading to the gate, heading to the door. Absolutely. Well, in so, this case, the entrance to the it, tent. Right. got to be in the tent, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. And, and Bob, to the general's point, um, the meet and greet that you attended, we, don't, we do not do any rehearsals because that event has to be relaxed. Right. It was very relaxed. Okay, yep. it's a meet and greet. You're just meeting the other good inductees. Food, by the way. Good yeah, food. thank you. You know, everybody just sees. Uh, they take a look at our uh, uh, offices in, in, in our conference room, right. uh, where we meet, and kind of like begins to understand how we function. Um, that's important prior to the induction. Sure. But the induction is a um, solid minute by minute serious. Um, fun event. Okay, the, the induction, let's get into that. The induction, it, 54 categories? 
There are 54 categories, Bob, for the inductees where we can classify them, put them into a group. Right. It starts with African Americans and goes all the way to women. And we have everything in between those two bookends right. that you could think of. Immigrants, sports, uh, religion, uh, churches, historians, you name it, it's in there. And probably someday in the future, there'll be other things like, you know, an, an artificial intelligence engineer or something. Right, right. The thing keeps growing. But there are 54 categories. Most of the inductees are one primary category, sure. but some of them are several. You know, artists who, who may be, you know, uh, involved in a particular artistic skill, you know, to pin it down a little further and all. So we always make a point of classifying or categorizing uh, the inductees by those categories, and that's what appears on the website eventually. Right. So if you want to know who in the Rhode Island Heritage Hall of Fame is in the military category, boom, you go to that, it'll give you everybody that's in there. Right. If I'm looking want, at one. <laughs> there you go. If you want to know, oh, you know, if you want to know whatever three, else, three, whatever three. else is there, that's the way you could do a search. And this is kind of a tool right. for researchers. Yeah, sure. But, you know, it, it's just one of those things that helps people see what we're all about. And it, it's kind of fun to categorize because sometimes you're scratching your head, gee, well, should she be a this should she be the well maybe she should be both you know we try to make that determination right, when right. the biographies are written for the inductees so you want different categories of people you want a, a, like a different field i people? think it just shows how broad the organization sure, is sure. i mean among these categories these 54 categories i don't know which category has the most inductees right right and that, uh, could, that could change every, every year, right? It could, It could yeah, be different could. every year, right? It could, but I mean, I, that's, that's probably forward. something that our webmaster could sort out instantly sure. for me. Oh, right. Larry, you wanted to know how many military people we have in, yep. in the Heritage yep. Hall of Fame? It's this number. How many named Bob? How many named <laughs> Bob? <laughs> she could probably figure that out, too. <laughs> but getting back to induction night in May, I would suggest that having been at this for almost 32 years, that you would be well served to get up there and say, after almost 32 years of doing an hour with Bob, right. I'm gonna do an hour with you people tonight. And they'll all clear out and that'll be the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, the general. No, I was the, gonna say, I'm the gonna big do hook. Three minutes. Yeah, the yeah, big, yeah, that's the what big I was hook. Ask you. Watch yeah. out, there's some of like them there the with the big show. hook. You got the hook, hook like the gong show hat? Yeah. The big hook. I was going to do three minutes with Bob. I was going to go no. get up there and say, "Well, I, I think you should take advantage of your of your title show here, <laughs> yeah, and tell them they're going to get an hour, whether they like it or not." Well, you could say that as a joke, hopefully. Uh, hopefully, course. yeah, yeah, it wouldn't be but an no, hour. No, you got you got three minutes. I got three minutes yeah. to say. Everybody's whole got bunch three of minutes. Things. Matter of fact, we got the first uh, two hundred and fifty word or less submission in. Did you? Yes? Did you? And I read it. And I read it at a, 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 a nice, moderate Mostly pace done. for the average person. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, the whole idea is you want to thank key people. Sure. And, you know, and, and it's obvious you want to thank the board of directors, or the, you want to thank your, your parents for bringing you up this way, you want to thank uh, the state of Rhode Island for whatever purpose or reason you want right. to, okay, it's, it's giving thanks. You, you may want to say, I want to thank the almighty because I would never even be here if it wasn't for him. It's an expression of gratitude, it, sure. It, it, that's it. And right. this, this fellow here uh, did a beautiful job. You know, he basically, just what I said, he thanked his parents. He had a couple of sentences in there on his upbringing. And the thing came to two minutes. And uh, I sent it back to him. I says, excellent, well done, and very succinct and to the point. Okay? Yeah. And I'm hoping that that's what... Right. The right. other inductees and, will do in their own words. Yeah. And Bob, you know, to that point, I just want to say it for any inductee that wants to share their letter with the Hall of Fame, we have PhDs that are excellent writers. Yep. You know, uh, people that are not used to writing, yeah. they, 
they, they got a thousand words and they don't realize they can say more with 200 words sure. to the point yep. brevity as the doctor kindly says yeah <laughs> and it and it just flows so uh that access to if if if, if any inductees want access to our writers larry is an excellent writer we have on our board i would say out of out of 20 we probably have 14 uh excellent good writers, uh, good writers yep. because to, to be a so you could approach one of them and say can you help me out with this? absolutely yeah. absolutely if you wanted help sure yeah and and also that evening and and or the um a uh, uh, couple weeks leading up to it is say for instance you wanted to have a private reception for you in our conference room yep for you to be honored okay a a private party of 10 20 30 people or so that's open to our inductees oh these are private chambers yep it's exclusive you see the pictures you see the beauty of the place and the library um uh, uh, that's open to our inductees it, it, and the only other people it's open to is to the is to the board of directors yep. <laughs> so this is this is a very unique private institution sure that we have so you know how, how many inductees this year this year every year every year is the same every year nine 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 living um dr connelly through his historical convocations two dozen or so that started 20 years ago right okay has brought uh, people since verrazano and roger williams i mean you're being inducted roger williams and stephen hopkins right <laughs> <laughs> they have to be inducted also <laughs> so through the historical convocations <laughs> he, he tirelessly brought them all up to date and also the recently deceased so when we say 800 individuals okay that's from that's from the beginning of our founding fathers sure sure and and and, 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 and you know and that's that's the leadership uh of uh dr connelly to ensure before he stepped down as president that uh this this would be fulfilled absolutely now you do research into the like me or the oh you, we you know check more. us out i can <laughs> oh. <laughs> bob <laughs> what 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 goes on in those chambers right <laughs> has to police, police, police report first and foremost <laughs> really <laughs> this is this is BCI. Uh, <laughs> see if there's any outstanding warrants yeah bob. exactly <laughs> And you got a couple, you got, well, at least uh, Mike Lyons knows me pretty well, so you got him to. Uh, Bob, in. I can tell you, as 20 years as a board of director, what is said in those chambers, okay? Like tomorrow night, I'll be swearing in our three staff members, okay? And you saw us get sworn, and maybe I'll just read the intensity after, because you heard the words of for Larry and I, and then the directors are being sworn in we're a society that we are sworn to secrecy okay um there's been years that uh, uh, uh you won't know who didn't make it right um you don't know that um you don't know we don't say how many was it 18 was it 27 was it 40 right. we don't let that information out no. um uh, uh, is, is held in confidence and in privacy and the way that uh, each person is vetted you're being vetted by your peers yep. like I'm from Winsaka but I also have done tremendous amount of business in Providence we have from Winsaka to Westerly covered everyone on the board whether they're a, we have a couple of judges and uh, six PhDs, and uh, <laughs> if you were at Butler Hospital, we have someone that knows that you were there. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Let me tell you something. Let me. This vetting process is the most uh, anal, if you will, vetting process, and you have to be held in the highest, <laughs> the highest esteem. standard, yep. the highest esteem in the state of Rhode Island. Otherwise, you don't uh, you don't make it. And um, the, uh, um, when we have these great discussions, it's no less than when Churchill was talking <laughs> to Parliament. There can be disagreements. <laughs> the reason when uh, the Dr. Conley 
said, Albert, I want you to be president. And that's another whole story. <laughs> I said, providing one thing right now, um, I just want to pick my military men. Uh, I want the general to be the event. <laughs> right. Chief yes, I was vice president, and I knew <coughs> the amount of work, and I was event chairman. So I split myself, yep. and I, I said I wanted uh, two people with a tenure of at least 10 years, sure. and also that has the time. Uh, the past month, I would virtually say, Larry, like uh, Larry said to me, he, he says, Al, we have 20 alligators grabbing at, at our behind. <laughs> um, what else can we do or say? Because we're revamping the whole organization <coughs> as we go along. But the last month for us has been full time. Full wow. time. It's oh. been crazy, yeah. Full, full yeah, time. Yeah, really. Been crazy. And I thought I retired. Yeah, huh? a few years ago. <laughs> My wife says, Wait, are you going to have a retirement <coughs> I said, yeah, I got to stop there. What time are you going to be back? Oh, I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> and usually I'm there like two or three times longer than I expected. But it is, that's what happens when you're rebuilding something. Right. Okay. Right. To your desires and, and, and standards and requirements. But uh, it, it, I think, Bob, it's a, it's, it's a reflection of Dr. Conley's precision and sense of history. When we, when we write up a biography for a, an incoming uh, prospect, uh, somebody who's been nominated, that's the first step. Yep. And anybody can nominate a person, an individual, for induction into the Rhode Island Heritage Hall of Fame. It does not have to be a member of the board of directors, you know? You, you could have, before your induction, just as Bob Venturini, you could have said, hey, I have a, a, a really good candidate who meets the qualifications for the Heritage Hall of Fame. Right. Write up a little piece, get that name into the, into the uh, mix right. for consideration. Now, somebody would be assigned, if you didn't provide a full-blown uh, biography. biography, somebody would be assigned to develop a biography for that individual that you wanted to place in nomination. Towards the end of the year, October 31st is the, uh, is the cutoff date. Yep. You get a list of nominees and the material to support their nomination. Sure. That becomes a ballot. And then you vote on the ballot for nine well, um, members. But under this presidency, that, that as change and it's going to be entered into the bylaws. Now we have an external vetting committee. You can put someone forward. It goes to that vetting committee. Right. Okay. They take a look at it and then they report to the board of directors. Is it valid or not valid? In other words, it, it, you can't sit. It, it doesn't, it doesn't move to the board of directors. Right. Uh, you got to get by the vetting committee. The vetting committee. The achievements just don't make it. It doesn't meet the criteria. Um, but, but when it gets to the board of directors, uh, it is, it's uh, in November. It's uh, very busy, and then um, at our uh, annual uh, 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 chambers in a conference room at a Christmas party, right, um, is when uh, the ballot committee reads the secret ballots. All right. Let me ask you this: they, uh, There's nine inductees. Yes. Yeah. When you vote on all of the inductees, you, know, you ain't going to tell me how many were together. You know, all how many people were nominated. Right. At the top nine get in. Top exactly. nine. Exactly. So the the 20, 20 or so members pick nine people. Uh, they pick uh, uh, up to uh, nine, no less than six. Right. They have to vote for at least six. At least six. But not right. more than nine. Not it's almost more like than voting nine. for uh, in, in Pawtucket, uh, Council at Large. You can same pick three. Same type of deal. You, or, the, or the school committee. You can pick same, seven. Same type of deal. Right? But you don't have to vote for all seven. You can do what is called bullet voting. Oh, we don't allow bullet voting. No bullet. In so, our oh, you, or you, or like you said, you have to vote for at least six. At least six. Right. So the, the top nine. The top nine. Be... Who got the most votes? Oh, we can't say we, that. We can't, can't be disclosed. Yeah, it cannot be disclosed. It was a tie. <laughs> that scene, it uh, was a tie. I, I'll tell you that much. I, I would say, yeah, I would say um, uh, 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 we don't know till the ballot committee um, 
everything's placed in a bag, yeah. and in front of us they go through it. They, there's three of them, they read the names. Everything is transparent, yep, okay? Because right. yep. um, let me tell you, there's sometimes a board of director, right, that really wants one of their people to be um, inducted into right. the Hall of Fame. And in the past, perhaps, a board of director would call other board of directors and say, um, could you think of my person? Because this is what's not on his bio. This is a person, and I want to say that at sure. the next meeting to you about, about, about the things that you don't know, Yep. right? But um, primarily, um, uh, a board of director, yes, and speaks, and gives the oral presentation. And if that board of director who's supporting a candidate doesn't stand up and speak on a person's behalf, right. okay? That's a big plus. That, because there's only 20 board of directors right. in the whole right. state. Right. And they give the reasons why, Yep. okay? So um, everybody uh, that's primarily, they guess, inducted. If, if a citizen brought me someone, I would say, okay, Tell me about this person. Let's write up a bio. Let's it goes to the vetting committee, and, and then the board of directors they're going to put a, put that person on the ballot. Okay, when that person's not on the ballot, we get a package about this big. Literally. Literally, this big. I mean, some some of the information provided on some of these this folks, big. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's like you, a book. You could have been perhaps maybe you know. 10, 15, 20 pages. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, I'm telling you, really? Bob. Yeah. Really. Really, because uh, on the board, uh, you know, we have people um, like uh, Dr. Conley or um, Colonel Morgan yep. or others that through the vetting process, okay, they go deep into the past. Right. Really deep into the past. And um, uh, 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 we've had these deep conversations of some of the top people in the state of Rhode Island. The top. And the board said, you know, I think on this one we're going to let, um, you know, uh, uh, lying dogs lie. It, wow. to, to, to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, you have to be stellar human being. Wow. Beyond. And um, so when you see the work of the board of directors, it's uh, tremendous. We have a mountain retreat on uh, October 27th is when the advanced party, you know, to, to tell you something about this board of director, uh, a month and a half ago, I said, we're planning to have a constitution convention, <laughs> right, at the mountain retreat, redoing our bylaws, okay? <laughs> and this is serious. <laughs> Everybody, people who went to the general board of directors, went say, please, can I be? He is the chairman <laughs> of the bylaw. And people were saying, can I be? Uh, we virtually never have anybody miss a meeting. There's 20 seats every now well, and then. Nice. One, yeah, that's also. Nice. Yeah. This is a organization. Right. It's not that like most organizations. No, where no. This 20, is, has, uh, 20 members and they only have three. Yeah, yeah. No, this, exactly. is, this is privilege. At the Mountain Retreat. Where is that? Uh, it, it, it'll probably be at Mount Washington. Yeah, no, Okay. Yeah. One of We're the. still vetting. You know, three or four locations. Right. We're going into lockdown for three days. Right. Three days wow. lockdown. We have a um, five-hour working lunch that um, the different committees and the general, they have to come before us and give their oral presentations right. on changing the bylaws. Exactly. Wow. And every director, every director Pretty is serious going to stuff. be there. Yeah. We take it serious. What, 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 go ahead. No, and this is something that he's initiated. Yep. One of the first things he did, again, it's part of changing the, the renewal board, right. okay, and, right. and upgrading everything to the 21st century. Change, yep. He said, I'm going to establish committees, okay, so every board member will be assigned to at least one committee, at least one. Most of them are on two committees, okay, and they're going to have to participate not only in board meetings, but committee meetings. And when we revise the bylaws, it's going to reflect that. If you miss more than X right. number of committee and board meetings, yep. you're automatically gone. 
okay? And uh, a great change because, you know, over the past, we, you, you always have an occasional one or two that show up when, when they feel like showing up, you know. And, and let's face it, this is true of any organization. Absolutely. There are people that want to be on a board yes. for one reason yes. and one reason right. only. To put it on their resume. Absolutely. Absolutely. And brag to be, oh, you know, I'm on the whatever the Hall of Fame board. Yeah, happens. And if somebody says, well, what do you do? In, in honesty, their answer should be, well, I do nothing. Nothing. But at least it's on my resume. Ah, so, ah. And, oh. and again, that's, that's in, in every board. All right, what, what's the, uh, the duties of past inductees? To, uh, they, uh, what happens when a person gets inducted, like, uh, uh, the past inductees are getting invited. They come to the event. Okay, you're going to see some past. Okay, and past inductees, they've uh, supported us through donations. Yep. Okay, and and there's different ways. Um, uh, 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 some of them actually, uh, they stay in constant contact with right. with the Hall of Fame. They always want to know as to what's going on and people have visited our offices and in the and, uh, and, uh, and the site. And you know, Dr. Conley and now I'm gonna be the person uh, has has uh, you know chaperone and going out to dinner with us and as president <laughs> I'm this little person from Winsocket, let's say, right? And you get to meet Bob. Yep. The top echelon of, of the state. Okay, yeah. let's see, you saw the president's office, how beautiful yep, it is, yep. and uh, 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 it's, it's uh, beyond an honor, it's beyond an honor. I mean, you know, we don't, we don't want to say it, but um, uh, uh, sometimes um, uh, for what we do, like we have a huge outreach program that you were there, that uh, Dr. Roberta Feather is, uh, right. chair, is yep. uh, chairwoman, and the way that the, this organization is going to be set up for next October, um, all my eight committees, it's like, it's like the military, the logistics, the vetting, <laughs> right? You have all the eight committees. See, that's a surprise. <laughs> and they're all here, <laughs> and she's here. At each time that's necessary, one committee, one or two or three people can come down and assist her in whatever. Because on our board of directors, to be a board of director, you have to have had tremendous experience in other organizations. Not only that, you have to have had roles in leadership. Yep. So I sit as president and on my, uh, the changing of the gavel, I said, what, what a wonderful, beautiful thing this is to have 20 of the most informed, educated people before me. And then I lean over and we are going to work. <laughs> and ever since Amen. then, it hasn't stopped. That's right. <laughs> All right, let's get down to the nitty gritty, guys. Who are the five minutes left? You gotta be kidding. Already? Oh, we gotta run through this fast. Who, who are the nine members? You mean uh, nine inductees? Inductees. Oh, let God. me. I got the list right here. Let me see. Uh, oh, is that, yep. is, is that last year's no, or? No, this is this, is this Larry, year. Larry, why don't you read that? You got a black. I'm happy to give it to you. If not, I have it over here. I can read it, Larry. Dave, oh. we've got them right handy. I had it too. Let's give Larry a little camera. Okay, a little Absolutely. camera. There we go. Larry, Larry. On, the, on the left, and the inductors are on the right of each name at the bottom. You can skip President Al Bouplon. Yes, I'll, script, I'll skip that one. <laughs> go ahead. We have um, <clears throat> uh, Mr. James Winokur. Yeah, who is he? He is a uh, gentleman who is uh, involved in philanthropy and other associations that are uh, statewide. He has a very good rep reputation for all that he's done over the years. And um, he's going to be inducted by uh, David Testatori. Right Do you here. know him? Do you know Dave? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I got it here. Oh. Let's see, he, he's a philanthropist and prominent Rhode Island real estate developer okay. and historical preservationist who has renovated numerous landmark buildings in the greater Providence area. Good, all right, who's next? Next is uh, J. Lynn Singleton. Oh, I know him. Yeah. You know him Everybody from PPAC and yeah. all his work with the uh, Providence Performing Arts sure. Center. He's a uh, well-established gentleman in that field. and Nice guy. 
a supposedly a very nice guy. Yeah, I know him personally. Next, we have the uh, uh, famous personality from Aquidneck Island, Mr. Rocky Kempinar, <laughs> whose uh, reputation speaks for himself for all he's done for the community yep. down on Aquidneck Island. He's Mr. Middletown, Mr. Newport, right. and of course, the family best known for its continuing almost seven decades of providing the annual clam bake to the Naval War College International Classes. Wow. Almost, his grandfather sure. started that. Wow. Almost seven decades. That's And it continues unabated. He's a wonderful gentleman. All right. Next well. is uh, <clears throat> O. Rodriguez Thompson. Uh, oh, she's a judge. Yes. A circuit judge, a I federal remember circuit her. judge. I, I remember when she was on, she started in Pawtucket. She was a uh, district court judge, giving out yes. uh, tickets and fines and stuff. In there Pawtucket. you go. That's she's with the United States much. Circuit Judge uh, of the U.S. <coughs> United States Court of Appeals in the first district. Wow. She she is one of the uh, honorees this year. Then we have a uh, Gail Cahalan Conley. Oh, I know Mrs. that. <laughs> Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Conley. Patrick T. Conley, right. whose philanthropy and involvement with Cleo's Trio, our three organizations, right. has been phenomenal since day one. Everything Dr. Conley has undertaken, Gail has been there to Absolutely. support him no and to suggest things that could make the organization even better. All right, who else? Where he is Mr. Rhode Island history, she, she is, is Mrs. Mrs. Rhode, Rhode Island there history. You go. There you go. Next, we have uh, uh, Robert Venturini. I'm not quite sure who he is. We don't know. We're you still know trying to get information. We're, we're, we're on looking that for character. information on this oh, guy. Oh, good. You don't have any information. <laughs> some, uh, some, uh, two well, what do you got? What do you got stuff. on me? <laughs> what do we have on him? Well, we have you described as. Maybe I shouldn't have asked that yeah, question. Right no, nope, I got it here. <laughs> okay, he's got it. Uh, we have you described as, um, uh, let's see, where are you? Oh, that's enough. <laughs> uh, right, I got it here. You got it? Yeah, legendary. Oh, here he is. What? Rhode Island cable TV host for over 30 years, who is noted not only for his programming, but also for his many charitable campaigns, especially toys his for Toys for Tots. For tots. Yeah. That's in the press release. That, that's there you great. go. Yep. Uh, then we have um, uh, Mr. Steve Cass. Do you know Steve? I do know Steve. <laughs> Radio show host, legendary. Prominent local and national news commentator, radio and TV host, and director of Big Brothers of Rhode Island. Lovely gentleman. I met him at the meet and greet. Yes, I we know had a nice well. conversation together. Wonderful guy. Next is uh, Gene Vent Valacenti. <laughs> he is I'm our. Sure you know him. He uh, is our uh, TV and radio personality, local personality, yep. well known on the uh, on the networks, and uh, a, a uh, an excellent, a great guy, an excellent uh, candidate for this year's induction, and then last but not least, uh, Mrs. Barbara Papito. Oh, I know her husband. Her husband I, Ralph. I graduated from Roger Williams College, which recently is now university. deceased, and. Yep. Um, Barbara is now running the Papito Foundation, which right. is a charitable organization that has broad-reaching, far-reaching goals of uh, assisting uh, minority communities yep. and so forth. She is a delightful lady. Well, guys, we spent an hour with Bob, and we run out of time. I got, I got about 30 seconds. Uh, who can go to the banquet? Uh, Anybody in the state of Rhode Island. Anybody in the state of Rhode Island. The, the banquet's at Warwick. It's at the... Uh, of the Inn and the Crossings. Well, I used to call it that, too. It's yeah. Crown Plaza. Crown Plaza. I always call it that. And, the uh, Crown Plaza. It's a is, is it at the tent again? Is the, yes. Outside the, the tent? Big top. What kind of food? Um, um, chicken franchise chicken with potatoes. Was it like last year? Yeah, excellent. similar. It was excellent. Gluten-free yes. vegetarian. Got yep. Bob? Yep. We can't mention price, but there's, is there music? Yes. What kind of music? There's a, just a little band that plays. Okay, I got to wrap it up. Dinner and dancing. Yeah, um, I won't be dancing. No, it's, it's if you'd people. like to, you can, Bob. People, well, I can. people I can. tend to stay with their family. Right. All right. <laughs> well, guys, you spent an hour with Bob. We didn't get through half of the stuff. Right. We're gonna have to have you guys back after. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Or half an hour with Bob. You'll, yeah. have to, you'll have to change the next one to another hour. Another. With Bob. Yeah, there you go. All right. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Thank you, President Al. 
James or Jimmy yes. yep. and Larry. Thank you for coming Thank by you. and spending an hour with Bob.